Last night was a rager, and you had a blast. But for some reason, you've woken up in the middle of a big forest. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 wilderness survival skills. I know it is 30 feet of extra rope, but, but I'm not going back up there. For this list, we're looking at methods, tactics, and other things you might want to know if ever you find yourself stranded in the great outdoors. But first, a little disclaimer. We are not wildlife experts, so be sure to do your own research before you venture out into the woods. These are just some common sense factoids and pieces of life advice that we feel you should consider before you go off on an adventure. Number 10, how to attract attention with a signal fire. These dead trees right here will burn very, very well. Want to get rescued fast? Of course you do. First things first, gather any combustibles you can find, like tinder, kindling, and firewood, and set up on a hilltop or in a clearing to get maximum visibility. If you don't happen to have matches or a lighter on you, create a spark using a mirror or a magnifying glass and the sun. In a pinch, your car battery could work too. If you have none of those handy, you can always go the old-fashioned route and bang two rocks together or rub two sticks together. I did it. I did it. <laughs> When you hear a helicopter or a plane, start piling on the branches. The drier, the better. This will make the smoke thicker and more visible. Then do your best to keep the fire going until rescue comes. Dad, wake up. Ren, what is it? Fire's out. That's impossible. I was stoking it all night. Number nine, how to keep up your dental hygiene. Oh, what I wouldn't give to have a a dentist right here in this cave. So, you're stuck in the wild. That doesn't automatically make you an animal. You're gonna wanna keep those pearly whites as pearly white as possible and avoid infections or diseases. So, here's a simple rundown on how to brush your teeth using only things found in the forest as your toiletries. Find the twig of a non-poisonous and fibrous tree and use that to scrape the gross stuff off your teeth. Obviously, you won't be able to find toothpaste in the wild, so you can boil the bark of any tree with tannic acid, you know, like oaks, birch, hickory, aspen, or poplar, and use it as a substitute for mouthwash. It doesn't, it doesn't taste good, but I don't care about that. Or you can find some sap and chew on that to get all the gunk out of your mouth. If all else fails, just find a stick and chew on it, which will clean your teeth as you chew. Just uh, roll it around and, and chomp on it, chew it. Get those fibers loosened up. Number eight, how to tie a bowline. Choke this off that limb? Yeah. I tied a bowline knot, you know it? I'm not stupid. Since you're watching internet videos right now, chances are you've never tied a knot other than your shoelaces. That's okay, we can work with that. All you really need to know to survive in the wild is how to tie a bowline, which is an old but easy to tie method of securing rope that can lift a huge amount of weight. How does a woman like you learn how to tie a perfect bowling knot? By dating guys with sailboats? Real outdoorsy type people use a mnemonic device about a rabbit coming out of his hole, running around a tree and jumping back into his hole to remember how to tie a bowline knot. And the rabbit comes up out of his hole, goes around the tree and gets scared and goes back down his hole and there you go. What does that mean? In essence, you've got to make a loop near one end of the rope, pass the other end of the rope up through that loop, move that end behind and around the upper part of the first end, and then pass it back down through the loop. Easy. How many people do you know who are that reliable? Number seven, how to find your way by day or by night without a compass. If it's daytime and you have an analog watch handy, you can use that as a compass. Hold it horizontally. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, point the hour hand at the sun. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, point 12 o'clock at the sun. Bisect the angle or draw a line midway between the hour hand and 12 o'clock and you'll find the north-south line, depending on where you're located. So with my hour hand pointing at the sun, I can look at my 30, 30 position here and that is pointing due north. If you don't have a watch, look straight up into the vicinity of the sun. It rises from the east and sets towards the west wherever you are, so you can use that as a good starting point. What about nighttime? 
Easy, just find the Little Dipper. Now find the Big Dipper. Now imagine a line between the two stars at the furthest part of the Big Dipper and connect that line with the handle of the Little Dipper. That's north, that's east, the mountains are that way. This is where you'll find the brightest star, which is Polaris, or the North Star, and it represents true north. There's Cassiopeia, there's the Big Dipper, follow it down, there's a North Star. Number six, how to perform DIY first aid. Have you ever been out in the woods and uh, slipped with your knife or cut yourself with your hatchet and, and you thought, oh, crumb, I forgot my first aid kit. What am I gonna do? All right, so you're still lost in the wilderness and a bear ate your first aid kit. What do you do? First thing, if you're injured, presumably that bear that stole your kit also roughed you up a bit, you need to clean the wound. Water will do fine for that, but preferably purified water should be your go-to. Obviously we have the ability with a water bottle to cleanse a wound. Next, you'll need some kind of bandage. Use a piece of clean cloth or material to cover the wound and apply pressure. Cooling it down, you can cool it down with mud, you can cool it down with sphagnum moss, which grows all around here. So you can pack it with moss, you can wrap it with a t-shirt. That gives you compression. If you have duct tape to hold the bandage on, even better. Now you'll need to find some old man's beard. <laughs> Don't worry, it's a type of lichen. It's green and it grows on tree branches. You can apply that to your wound as an antibiotic and you should be good to go. Depending on how serious the wound is, that is. <laughs> Number five, how to make a spear to catch animals and food. You've got a fish on your, on your spear and trying to stab his brain out to get him to kill him so that I can bring him back and he ended up getting away. Here's a handy tip for catching cute little forest creatures or small marine animals for consumption. A split tip gig is a multi-pronged spear that quickly snatches critters from the forest floor or in a body of water. You want me to make a f spear? Yeah. We need you to make one for fishing. Go and take that. Find yourself a small sapling about an inch around and cut the thicker end into four parts, going about 10 inches down from the top. See how it spread those tips out? I'm gonna slip one of them in this way, just like so. Use a stick to spread the parts and then make sure they're good and sharp with a rock or knife. Finally, use that gig to brutally spear anything from snakes to chipmunks to rats, raccoons, bears, fish, etc. Yeah. Number four, how to find food. When these are compact and green, you can eat those. Some people will boil those up and, and cook them that way. If you don't have a split tip gig, you'll need to get food another way before you become food for something else. Your best bet is to find a guide that tells you which berries and flowers are edible. If one isn't handy, which it probably isn't if you're lost in the wilderness, then you can use the good old fashioned method of trial and error. Remember this rhyme, white and yellow kill a fella, purple and blue, good for you. But beware, while this approach might allow you to survive longer, it might also kill you immediately. Come on, Alex, you gotta be a little cautious. I mean, that book of yours is cool and everything, but you can't depend entirely on leaves and berries. If you'd rather not leave your survival to chance, there are a few rules of thumb to adhere to. Avoid plants with milky or discolored sap, three-leaved growth patterns, almond-scented leaves, anything like seeds that are inside pods, and things that look like mushrooms. Good luck. But nothing as spectacular as the true chanterelle, and they can cause alarming symptoms if eaten. Number three, how to build a fire. If you do manage to get some food, you might need a fire to cook it. But even without food, you need to keep yourself warm. First and foremost, you'll need Tinder. No, not the app, although we suppose that is one way to keep yourself warm. Tinder in this case refers to small sticks that will easily turn a spark into a full-blown fire. The best Tinder you could use is shreddable tree bark. Break those up into even smaller bits. Find an area to make your fire and create shelter from the wind by using a log or something big. Then stack your kindling, preferably branches of different sizes, in a conical shape. This will facilitate the passage of oxygen to your fire, which will make it grow. If you don't have any of the items mentioned in our signal fire entry, then you can use a flint to spark the fire, or again, rub two sticks together. When it starts to grow, then you can begin to add bigger kindling. You could build fire extenders. Those would be things out of like pine pitch or, um, 
even birch bark or other easily ignitable uh, material. Also, don't forget to scavenge the area for any other material you can use to keep yourself warm, like leaves, pine branches, or the skin of an animal you've hunted for food. Number two, how to build a shelter. Well, I guess you could put together a little lean-to from this. Lean-to? We're supposed to be living in a palace. Well, it looks like you're gonna be here for a while. May as well get comfortable. You'll need to find a dry area, preferably one that's flat, elevated, and protected from the elements by a cliff wall. Look around for a strong tree. I see white oak trees. I've got palmettos to build with. This is a good spot. Ideally, you want your tree to be at an angle, but if that's not the case, then grab a big branch from the ground, lean it against a strong tree, and start stacking smaller branches on one side to make a wall. This is called a lean-to. Once this is done, find leaves, moss, and other forest debris and start covering the wall, as well as the ground, to keep you warm. When you're finished, get cozy and pray that the wind doesn't pick up. This is what I might call a backwoods timeshare. No honorable mentions this time around. Number one, how to find clean water. Path to knowledge is fraught with consequence. Yeah, I'm just looking for the path to water. If you want to find water, you must first find dirt. There's probably nothing more important to your survival than good old H2O. Water that you find in a puddle or stream is a safe bet, but only if you boil it. See, we told you that fire would come in handy. If you can't do that, then collecting rain, snow, or dew is also a great way to get yourself something drinkable. To get enough of the stuff to keep you alive, you can soak the liquid up using a rag or some type of fabric like a shirt or bandana, and then squeeze the water out. You can also tie a bag around a leafy branch to collect the water from a tree's transpiration, which is also drinkable. If you happen to find a cactus, you can slice it open for some refreshing H2O as well. And because there's so much of this, best way of getting the fluid is really just to munch and suck. Finally, and perhaps most deliciously, you can also quench your thirst with the syrup from a maple tree. Awesome, awesome. What it boils down to is that staying safely hydrated is the name of the game. With any luck at all, in a few hours, so long as the sun stays out, I've taken care of dehydration. Do you agree with our list? What wilderness survival tip saved your life? For more epic top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. I think we did it! Well done!